Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. A few months ago, I posted a video on this channel in which I counted down the 10 greatest European royal houses. I just watched that one. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that. Link to the Discord. Click on it, send you right over there. Would love to have you. My name is Connor. If you're new, I like to learn useful charts. Awesome channel. Of all time. Well, today I'm going to do the same thing, but this time for Asia. Like in the previous video, I'll only be including dynasties from the medieval and modern periods, and I'll be basing things Isis? on three criteria. The first is longevity. So, and I'll be. Wait, what's my favorite? Ooh, the, this one. What the heck is that? Ooh, that's cool. That's nice, but it looks sort of uh, terroristy. Okay. Be basing things. I'm just a stupid American. I don't know. That could mean something completely different, and I'm just indoctrinated into thinking it is. On three criteria. The first is longevity. So this is simply the total number of years that the dynasty held on to power. The second is size. For this, I used the total land area that the dynasty controlled at its maximum extent. If a Mongol di if there was a Mongol dynasty, that it's going to get the number one size score. Finally, I came up with a rough measure of the dynasty's overall influence on world history by asking eight fellow history YouTubers to serve as. Okay, so the Mongol one has to be number one, except for longevity. It's really bad in this one, but in these two scores. Pretty good. It's probably going to be some Chinese thing. Judges. You can find a full list of the participating YouTubers in the description, along with links to their Jack channels. Rackham. I definitely encourage you to check them out. Number 10, the House of Chakri. This house is one of only two on the list that are still reigning today. In this case, in the Kingdom of Thailand, Never formerly conquered. known as Siam. It may not be the largest country in Asia, but it is notable in that it has survived as an independent entity for almost 800 years. Never conquered. Although the current ruling dynasty has only been ruling for 238 of those years. And when I say independent, I mean truly independent. There are only a handful of countries in the entire world that were not colonized or at least controlled by a European power at some point. Thailand is definitely one of those countries. And for that, I agree that they deserve a place in what the top America? 10. Number nine, the House of Chola. This is the only true Indian dynasty to make the top 10 list. And take note that it's from South India. This is because for most of the medieval and modern period, North India was ruled by foreign dynasties. Of the many Hindu dynasties from South India, I would argue that the Cholas were the greatest. This is because they did not Cholo. only rule over a good portion of the Indian subcontinent, they also expanded their rule to include many islands in Southeast Asia as well. In fact, their empire stretched far beyond the borders of this map. Now, it's difficult to come up with an exact number for the area that they controlled, but suffice to say, it was pretty large. It's also difficult to come up with an exact number for their longevity. This is because their roots stretch all the way back to ancient times, with the first historical mention of the Cholas dating to around 300 BCE. Guys, before 8 starts, number 8, I gotta go take a peep. Be so it's possible that the dynasty lasted for about 1,000 years. However, we only have good records for this dynasty from the 9th century onwards. So that gives them a verifiable length of 431 years. Still pretty impressive. Number eight. I gotta pee, I'll be right back. Peep. Okay, I'm back. I wash my hands. The House of Yi. This Korean dynasty is often referred to as the Choson dynasty. But Choson was actually the name of the kingdom, not the house. The house name was in fact Yi and it replaced the House of Wang, which was the Admiral? house that ruled the previous Korean kingdom, Goryeo. Of these two major Korean dynasties, Wang and Yi, Yi lasted slightly longer, its total time on the throne being 518 years, although for some of that time it was basically a vassal state, first of the Qing dynasty of China, and then later of the Empire of Japan. But it was the House of Yi, back when Choson was a strong independent kingdom, that produced Korea's greatest king, Sejong the Great, 
who, among many other contributions, is notable for personally inventing Hangul, the writing system still used in Korea today. Number seven. So both Chinese or both Korean and Japanese writing systems are variations on Chinese writing systems. Is that correct? I, I definitely know Japanese is the case. The House of Aisen Jueloa, better known as the Qing Dynasty. This isn't number one. When were they at their most powerful? Ming or Qing? Because this is where the... Ch this is number seven? 276 years. Look at the... So in the length of the reign, it's high. The size is huge. And it's pr probably pretty powerful. How is this number seven? D. Okay, here we've taken a giant leap in terms of size, power, and influence. The first few houses on this list were really only important at a regional level. What are but one starting with this dynasty, we're going to be dealing with royal houses that impacted a much larger portion of the continent. So of all the various Chinese dynasties, the Qing dynasty was actually the largest in terms of land area. And although I just said Chinese, I should point out that the Qing dynasty wasn't actually Chinese. Although they ruled China, the house itself originated in Manchuria, which is just north of the traditional Chinese territory. This is why the Qing dynasty is also sometimes called the Manchu dynasty. Not only was the Qing dynasty the largest. So are they going to include like caliphates and like Byzantine? Like are those dynasties? Like there's probably some Indian dynasty, another one maybe, or like Persian. Like what is a dynasty? dynasty to rule China, though. It was also the most recent and, in fact, ruled China up until around the start of World War I. Number six, the House of Timur Babur. Patrilineally, the House of Babur was directly descended from the House of Timur. So that's why I've grouped these two together as a single entry. The founder was Timur, also known as Timur the Lame, or is he who the country of Timur, of East Timur is named after, or Timur Leste? Tamerlane. He conquered Persia and his Timur, also known as Timur the Lame, or Tamerlane. He conquered Persia and his descendants continued to rule there for over 100 years. But then, after their fortunes fizzled out in the Middle East, one of his great 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 grandsons, named Babur, managed to conquer a good portion of North India instead. Thus was born the Mughal Empire, which eventually expanded to include much of South India as well, and which lasted up until the British takeover. Is he a son of Genghis Khan or something? Although by that point, its emperors were mostly just symbolic. The Mughal Empire is also notable in that it was one of the richest empires in all of world history. Its emperors had way more wealth than the great French king Louis XIV, who was their contemporary. The Mughals are, of course, also the ones who built the famous Taj Mahal. Number five, the House of Osman, rulers of the Ottoman. Sixteen thirty-one to fifty-three. Ottoman Empire, based out of what is today Turkey, one of the greatest Islamic dynasties of all time. They are notable for being the ones who finally conquered Constantinople, bringing an end to the Eastern Roman Empire, which had lasted well over one thousand years. They also were one of the few Asian dynasties to capture and hold on to a good portion of European territory for several centuries. In total, they reigned for 623 years and ruled over 5 million square kilometers at their peak. Not too shabby. In my European video, a lot of people wondered why the Ottomans did not show up in the top 10 European royal And I'm sort of wondering if Russia would show up in the Asian one, but obviously it, it won't. Royal houses. Well, being that the house originated on the Asian continent, I felt that they belonged more appropriately here. So here they are. Number four, the house of Li better known as the Tang Dynasty. This is the highest ranking Chinese dynasty on my list, and indeed many historians consider it to be the greatest Chinese dynasty of all time. An argument could perhaps be made for the earlier Han Dynasty, but that was an ancient dynasty, and as I said at the beginning, this video is limited to the medieval and modern dynasties only. Okay Although then, the alright, so there's no Alexander the Great stuff. The Tang Dynasty no Byzantine was not the largest. Or it could be the medieval and modern dynasties only. 
Although the Tang dynasty was not the largest or longest ruling of the many Chinese dynasties, it was certainly the most influential, and it served as the model for all the various imperial dynasties that followed it, not only in China but in other countries as well. In fact, the period in which the Tang dynasty ruled China is considered to be one of China's two golden ages, the other being the Han dynasty. Number 3. The House of Yamato, also known as the Imperial House of Japan. So it was really difficult to rank the final three houses the on this list. Really, I could have just said that it was a three-way tie for the top spot. But I resisted the temptation and I went ahead and tried my best to rank them. But keep in mind, things were really close between the top three. Mongols. If we were basing things only on longevity, the House of Yamato would win, hands down. Not only is it the longest reigning dynasty in Asian history, it is the longest reigning dynasty in all of world history. And surprisingly, it is still reigning today. If we go by legend, this dynasty is almost 2,700 years old. But I'm not going to go by legend. I'm going by historical dates only. So by that measure, this house, in its patrilineal line, has been reigning for 1,481 years. Wow. Now, for most of that time, the territory controlled by Japan without having a succession crisis was limited. Wow. So like every male in that lineage had a son. Now, for most of that time, the territory controlled by Japan was limited to the main Japanese islands, not the vast World area War shown II. on this map. World the War maximum I. extent you see here is the Empire of Japan during World War II. It's also important to note that throughout most of Japanese history, the emperor did not actually hold much power. Just like today, the emperorship was often more of a ceremonial position. For many centuries, a military leader known shogun. as the shogun. I mean, isn't he considered like a god on earth? And I, I, I only recently realized how the Japanese never really filled in the gap between um, Southeast Asia, you know, Myanmar, Siam, you know, Vietnam area. Thailand to, uh, a, you know, northern China area, uh, that they never kind of completed the connection. I didn't, I didn't realize that until a few months ago. Was the real leader of Japan. But because this royal house has held on so long, I think they definitely deserve to be in the top three. Number two, the house of Quraysh. This okay, number one has got to be the Mongol Empire. Is the house of the prophet Muhammad. Although, in this case, the word tribe would be a better term. Patrilineally, this dynasty also includes all of the Umayyad caliphs, as well as all of the Abbasid caliphs. Although they are Cheating. often seen as being two separate dynasties, both the Umayyads and the Abbasids do trace their paternal line to a single common male ancestor, a man named Fir ibn Malik, also known as Quraysh. The current royal house of Jordan and Morocco also- Wait, did Muhammad have children? He did, right? So trace their origins to Quraysh, but since the exact lines are not verifiable, I haven't included them in the totals. So they Wow, from the Saharan Desert to the Indus Valley, the Himalayas, Asian Steppe, Caspian, Caucasus Mountains, Asia Minor, Red Sea, Persian Gulf. Jeez. This dynasty may not be the longest lasting in Asian history, although at 626 years, it certainly did last long. It's just such a perfect place for um, being a trade middleman and making a ton of money. Nor was it the largest in terms of land area, although again, at 11 million square kilometers, it was certainly not small. But this dynasty certainly wins hands down when it comes to lasting influence. Considering the influence that Islam still good point still has on Western Asia after 1400 years, not to mention the rest of Asia and much of Africa and other parts of the world as well, the quote unquote house of Quraysh definitely deserves one of the top spots. Number one. They're not going to do Byzantine, are they? Because they said Byzantine could technically be in the Middle Age area. And it's mainly and, and it's in constantinople which is short it's going to be the mongols the house of borgigan yep 
This was the house of the great Genghis Khan. And when you look at the amount of territory that this one family conquered, it's really no surprise that they ended up in the number one spot. At a maximum size of over 24 million square kilometers, the Mongol Empire was the largest land-based empire ever. Not Obviously, its weakest front is probably the, the rain. I mean, still 575 years. But in terms of influence on history, this has got to be number one because of how many, how, how many places it squashed. Like from, uh, you know, Crimea, you know, modern day Ukraine, Russia, even, you know, Eastern Europe, um, Asia Minor, Anatolia, like the amount of places, just by the amount of places it, it, it subdued and therefore caused change in those areas even after they left means that they have to be like the number one in terms of influence on history. Not just in Asia, but in the world. Technically, the British Empire was larger, but the British Empire was non-contiguous, meaning that it was spread out over a bunch of different areas that didn't actually share a border. The Mongol Empire eventually split into four main parts. The Golden Horde, which included parts of Eastern Europe, the Ilkhanate, based in Persia, the Chagatai Khanate, which was the longest lasting of the four, and the Great Khanate, better known in Chinese history as the Yuan Dynasty. But even though the Yuan Dynasty eventually fell to the native Chinese Ming Dynasty, it continued to rule in Mongolia for several more centuries. So not only did this royal house conquer a lot of territory, it also managed to survive for a decent amount of time. And it was no small player in terms of influence either. The Mongols were basically responsible for strengthening the connections between East Asia, Middle East, and Europe, both in terms of the transmission of culture, but also of real physical DNA and biological disease. It could be said that the Mongol invasions paved the way for the Black Death, which in turn paved the way for the European Renaissance, which in turn paved the way for the modern age in which we still live. So yeah, the Mongols are Thanks, pretty darn Genghis. important. And while I'm on the topic of the Mongols, it is often said that around 10% of all men living in the parts of Asia that were once part of the Mongol Empire, which is most of Asia, are the direct male line descendants of Genghis Khan. So he uh, got, a, got it on quite a bit. Consensually, I... Uh, pass. This is, in fact, true. But it gets even more impressive. Keep in mind that that 10% figure only refers to direct male line descendants. If we were to count females and female line descendants, the number would go up very close to 100%. If you're curious to learn more about why this is, I'd recommend to one to count females and female line descendants, the number would go up very close to 100%. So he won the game of life. Since the, the only goal in life, not like our meanings of life, but like of life itself, is to pass on your genes as much as possible. Like that is the point of any animal on the planet. Is to continue your genes, pass on genes, which means mating with as many people as possible. So pretty much Genghis Khan is the winner of the game of Earth evolution. If you're curious to learn more about why this is, I'd recommend you watch my video entitled Is Everyone a Descendant of Royalty? Which I'll link to in the description. I've seen it, I believe. Finally, I'll point out that there is a possibility that the Timurid and Babarid dynasties that I mentioned earlier are actually part of this one large Borjigan dynasty. However, since uh, those connections are not historically verifiable, I put them separately and ranked them separately. So there you have it, the top 10 greatest royal houses in Asian history. Let me know in the comments whether you agree or disagree with my choices. I agree, but I think in terms of, in, I think number one and number two, well, he, well, I guess I still agree. Because in terms of number one and two, what was number three? Yeah. No, I want to. I don't think number three. In terms of one and two, I think these two could be 
pretty much interchangeably, and I could really see an argument for this one being number one simply because of the, the spread of the religion, meaning the impact on today. You have over a billion people following that religion, and the, the amount that must have affected historical decisions, I'm sure, is unfathomable. But I, I'm, I'm sure the same kind of goes with Mongol Empire in terms of influence, just because of how much they jumbled up everything everywhere they went. So I could see number one and two as interchangeable. But uh, I like it, and I don't know enough to go much further in detail. Yo, kill. All right, guys. Hope you're doing well. Love y'all. Chin up. All right, mental health, no joke. You're not alone. You'll get better. See you guys.